Hey everyone, Shakaris here. Welcome to Losing to the Shopkeeper, where I flame your favorite professional players for getting scammed into buying suboptimal items by the two guys sitting in each base of Summoner's Rift. On a more serious note, the goal of this video is to educate and point out itemization mistakes so that you don't do them in your own games. Let's start with a simple one. In this game, Someday rushed Mercury Treads. Why is this suboptimal? Someday is laning against a Kale who does mixed damage. Usually more magic than physical, unless she goes for a full AD build, the rest of the composition does very heavy physical damage with Brexai, Lucian, and Aphelios. The composition also has very little crowd control, with Leona being the brunt of it with two stuns and a snare. Ninja Tabbies would have been much better against this heavy auto-based physical damage composition. Tabbies would help against both Marksmen and Rek'Sai, and even against Kale as it gives armor and reduces basic attack damage by 12%. Someday is also running Legend Tenacity, a rune that grants up to 30% tenacity, and with limited crowd control on CLG's side, it's more than enough. You don't buy Merc Treads for the magic resistance, you get it to reduce CC. The 450 gold Null Magic Mantle gives the exact same MR as Mercury Treads. Moving on, TSM vs Immortals, yes, the 60 minute slugfest. In this game, Aika ran Dark Harvest on Zoe. Now, Zoe pivots between a couple of different keystones, usually from Electric Q to Airy or even Unsealed Spellbook. I couldn't find anyone in the major leagues playing Dark Harvest Zoe, so I wanted to compare Dark Harvest to Electric Q as they are both burst keystones. Electric Q has a higher AP ratio as well as much higher base damage. Worth mentioning, of course, that Dark Harvest's base damage increases by 5 by Soul Ripped. A lot of the value on Dark Harvest is that it resets on takedown, allowing for potential multiple procs in a single fight. But this is the LCS, not ARAM, where you will average more than a kill a minute and you can get multiple resets per fight. LCS games are going to have much less kills in action, which limits the impact of Dark Harvest. In addition, Zoe isn't really a reset type champion. The amount of times Ika could have procced Electrocute is superior and each instance would have done more damage. TLDR, Dark Harvest Zoe seems pretty suboptimal. Ika basically had no keystone for most of the game. I'm aware that Doublelift and Zven have also ran Dark Harvest Senna over Glacial Augment, and I also think that's suboptimal, but at least in that situation, I can understand the value of specking into Domination, because Ultimate Hunter exists, and her high-powered autos with lethality items are much easier to hit, thus stacking Dark Harvest should theoretically be easier as well. Speaking of Senna, we also had Kabe on Senna this game. Let's go over his build. Now, I'll preface this by saying that Kabe has likely not gotten to super late game on Senna before this match, so he is excused. In any case, let's go over why his build is suboptimal. This is his build in 40 minutes, which looks pretty standard as a 6 item Senna build. As the game progresses, he starts accumulating gold, which would allow him to swap out items. At 53 minutes, he backs with 3750 gold. Why is this build not optimal? Let's start with the lethality items. Kabe has two lethality items, granting him 39 lethality, which is 39 armor penetration in this case because he is level 18. At this point, Aatrox has 141 armor, Elise 149, Zoe 85, Ezreal 93, and Braum 234 armor. Against these champions, he's reducing flat 39 armor, but let's say that instead he sells Yomu's Ghostblade and buys Lord Dominic's regards. He would be reducing Aatrox and Elise's armor by 70, Zoe's by 51, Ezreal's by 54, and Braum's armor by 103. Let's put this in more practical terms. This auto on Altec did 448 damage. If he had Lord Dominix over Yomu's, he would have dealt 40 more damage. This hit on Elise, 394 damage. With Lord Dominix, it would have been 459 damage, 65 more. Still doesn't seem like much? Imagine multiplying this difference by about 3 times in an auto Q auto combo. As enemies itemize for armor, it is worth to buy Lord Dominic's regards to help with penetrating through their resistances. In super late game scenarios and with everyone reaching level 18, it's also very normal for champions to have 80 plus armor just off of base stats. Kabe also sold his boots for Trinity Force, which is common for most AD carries. However, Senna doesn't get attack damage per level. She's stuck at base 50 AD, which means she'll only get 100 damage Triforce procs, and that's pre-mitigation, so before armor is calculated. Aside from that, she doesn't really use the attack speed well, as she has an AS ratio that discourages her from buying attack speed. So realistically, she's getting 20% CDR, a mediocre sheen proc, and the phage stats and passive. What would have been better alternatives? The Black Cleaver is one of them. 15 more attack damage in Trinity Force, more health, same amount of CDR, and phage passive. Black Cleaver's armor reduction applies before the armor penetration on Lord Dominic's and Lethality items, which makes it very strong. In addition, Senna stacks Black Cleaver very fast. Both Auto and Q apply 2 stacks, so Auto Q Auto is a full stack cleaver and E Auto Q is 5 stacks. 
That's 24 or 20% armor reduction. Alternatively, if he fears that he would be too slow without boots, other zeal items could be options. Rune on Surricane would give 7% move speed, and while the attack speed, again, not very useful, the crit chance would convert into lifesteal via her passive. And Runon's passive bolts would reduce her Q cooldown faster, assuming she's hitting multiple targets. Phantom Dancer would give 5% movement speed, plus 7% bonus for attacking champions, a fat 600 health shield if he gets jumped on, and similar to Runon's extra crit to convert into lifesteal. Okay, video is already getting too long, and I had several more to go through, but let's just touch on Orn real quick. Number one, if you have an Orn on your team, consider your champion choice and itemization choices carefully. A lot of his power comes from upgrading your items in the mid to late game, and too many teams right now are either pairing him with champions that don't build Orn items, or players that don't change itemization to include Orn items earlier in their build. Number two, the way Orn upgrades items is based on your item slots. If you have Death Cap and Ludens in your inventory, Orn will upgrade whichever item is in the lowest item slot. So make sure that you have Death Cap in item slot 1, for example, to guarantee the right item is upgraded. I've seen this happen way too many times, and the difference between upgrading Ludens or Rabadons is 35 AP, which is significant. Anyways, that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to suggest any itemization mistakes that you think might be happening, let me know, and see you next time.